Mike, today we're going to talk about something a little different. Uh, we're kind of known for brownings around here. That's our main bag, but um, today we're going to talk about a Remington Model 1148 or the uh, Model 48, which are one and the same, pretty much the same gun. A few differences, but they all work about the same. Uh, they're good little guns. There's lots of them out there. You can buy them. They're pretty cheap to buy, and they, um, they hold up well and they shoot well, but they do have a tendency to... Uh, collapse of springs. There's that ringing phone. So they do have a tendency to collapse springs and once they do that of course they really start thumping you around. They really start kicking you around. So I've got a kit for these now that uh, replaces these uh, springs and uh, gets them going to where they it really tames them down and makes them shoot a whole lot milder. So uh, I'm going to run through how to uh, install the kit and we're going to talk about some differences in the, uh, the rings that uh, you might encounter in your gun and uh, we'll go from there but uh, we're gonna go ahead and remove this stock and we simply do that by taking the butt plate off and uh, taking our long screwdriver and uh, removing the stock that's pretty easy to do like so I've got a guard on my screwdriver we talked about that before so I don't get down beside the bolt and split the side of the stock so Amazon are tight. Put it in the vise. Golly. This one. Oh, that one may, that one may have never been taken off. I don't think I have. It was tight. So you're going to need a big screwdriver. Uh, some of them are really cinched down tight. Alright. Got it going though. So, uh. Box coming off. Okay. This is a this is your uh, your setup on in that stock. When you put it back in, this ring goes down with the little interruptions down, and you got lock washer than your nut. But uh, we're mainly today talking about springs and rebuilding and. Uh, putting a kit in these guns. So now, to uh, remove your, uh, it's just like a browning basically. You got a plug in here, they're made out of wood, and you got a pin that uh, holds that plug in place. So you take the pressure off a little bit, push the pin out, and hold on, because it's spring loaded. Okay, there's your action spring. Uh, it has a, uh, a follower, and the action spring plug. I don't have these plugs made up yet, but you rarely ever need them. They are made out of wood, but they hold up quite well. Uh, these uh, plugs are usually on a little tight because there's a, the springs upset a little bit, so it grips them a little bit. So sometimes you gotta pull pretty hard to get them off. That was a tight one. All right, let me step around and grab a new spring. Okay, my spring was out of reach, but uh, here's a new action spring. And uh, if we compare it to the old one, you can see how how short this old one is. Uh, they collapse, that's what they do. So, simple matter to put your action spring in, you put your wooden plug in, you uh, put your follower back on. Make sure you get it right. You want to make sure this little indention in here, this little hollowed out area is up because that's what goes in to the links. So uh, there's your uh, follower in place. Now, let's go ahead while we're at it. And let's talk about these a little bit. Let's uh, break it down. It's like any, basically any other Remington Model 11, Model 58, 1100. The trigger plates are always about the same. They've used them for, for decades because they're tried and proven and they just, they don't break. Nothing hardly ever breaks in. So, Here's our trigger plate. Now, this one's really dirty, so I'm going to go back and clean it real good. But uh, I want to make sure, put safety on, make sure the safety works. Take safety off, hold on your hammer, and uh, let that hammer fall. And you want to make sure this link on the bottom here kicks up this link here. And that's your disconnector. Uh, sometimes it's easy to do when you put these back together. Just swap these around. Check them, make sure they disconnect like that. Hold your trigger. 
pull the trigger, let the hammer drop, then it should cock again. So it's disconnecting. Now, something just happened on this one when I took it apart. The uh, shell stopped, it fell out. Um, there's usually staked in place. That's common and it's not a serious matter. I'll show you how to kind of put that back in. Uh, pull your uh, operating handle out and slide out your bolt. And uh, this bolt's pretty dirty, so I'm gonna go back and clean it and scrub it up. Uh, Being as I got the gun apart, that's that's how simple they come apart. Uh, there's really nothing to it. But in the meantime, let's just talk about putting the kit in. We'll clean this one up later. So I'm gonna put the bolt back in. It uh, just fits in the rails here in the receiver. And they're really a simple little gun. That's what makes them so good. You can buy them right. And they're very reliable. Put your back in now. When you put your um, action spring back in, these links right here, uh, they'll fall down into the receiver and kind of uh, make it a little bit. Uh, they don't end up where they're supposed to be. Is what the bottom line is. So I'm going to slide in my spring, my faller, and I'm going to hold these links up with oh whatever you got. I don't know a. a uh, Oh, uh, needle nose pliers, or here's needle nose pliers, that'll work. Just kind of get a hold of them, hold them up, and make sure they go into that action spring follower, like so. Uh, then it's just a simple matter of uh, putting your uh, pin back in the plug to hold it in place. Simple thing to do. There again, I'll clean this gun later, but while you got it down, you might as well get, get your gun broke down. That's a good time to clean it. So anyway, I want to talk about this uh, shell stop. They fall out because the staking breaks loose on them. They, that's common on any Remington. It's not necessary that they be staked in place. It's handier if it is, but not necessary. And this one, you got to make sure things go back in right by sticking it in forward. Anyway, just put it back in place. And... Uh, Kind of get your hole halfway lined up. Push it in place. And this one's uh, sticking a little bit there. I want it to pop in to the receiver. There it went. All right, so you want a flushing receiver. Now, being as it's not staked, and it's going to want to come out on you, the way you put it in, just put your trigger plate in like so, and that captures that a shell stop. And holds it in place. Kind of like that. Now I'm going in pretty tight. You gotta make sure it's it's laying in the side of the receiver, right where it's supposed to be. And uh, I'll see if I can pop this one in at the bottom. It's protruding out a little bit. I think I got it exactly there. I don't think I had it in the front front end correctly. All right. That all feels good. Then just rotate that trigger plate in from the back. Like so. And that'll hold it in place. Then slide back and line up your hole. Your trigger plate hole. There. And as long as that plate's up there and place where it belongs it'll hold that shell stop in place so that's that pull your bow back stays over there. okay the shell stops where it belongs all right so now we just put the stock back on remember uh first washer's got some little uh, interruptions on it put that down. Now, sometimes these are a little tricky to get in place, and I'll tell you a trick I have learned. If you can't get all this in to, to fall into place where it belongs, I put a little dab of super glue on a couple things just to kind of hold them in place. Hold that all in place together, and uh, makes it easier on you, but not always necessary. We're going to try it without it. That looks like it went in right. No, it didn't either. I can see it down there. I just need something here to. You know, this junky stuff on my bench. You think I could find something? 
Let's, let's jockey that thing around down there a little bit. And another way you can put them on too, I'll tell you. This works somewhat too. I grab like a cleaning rod. You know. Or a large screwdriver works. I'll put the washer on, on that. In fact, let's go ahead and put this washer on too. Put that washer where it belongs. And I stick it down in there. And I shake it around. And those things just kind of fall in place. Yep, they're where they belong. Okay. The nut. We put the stock back on. And yeah, this, these the nuts on these things, they tend to cock sideways on you, what have you. Give you a little problem, but they usually line up and go. It feels like this was on the way. You just snug it down good. You don't want it to come loose on you. Like that. Put a screw back in place. All right, so we have replaced our action spring. What I didn't do, I get in a hurry here. I would recommend put a couple drops of uh, oil on that spring. Like I use my special oil that we make up here. I forgot to do that, but we'll do that later because we're going to pull this gun down later anyway. All right, I want to talk about the real business end of this gun now. This one had a collapsed spring in it. I wish I had kept that spring. Uh, but I didn't. It had a spring in it we replaced the other day, and it was really collapsed. It was way short, uh, just typical of a Model 11. So we have already replaced this spring. And, uh, yeah, we just found it in the trash can. Like, here's a spring that came out of it. See that? See that difference? Big, big difference. These things, these old square springs, they really collapse. So... This spring goes on first. Now, when you're sliding a spring on, you want the free end. You know, if, if you feel if you put it on and you feel some resistance as you put it on, and there might be a burr on a spring or something, make sure that goes to the bottom. So up at the top end of the business end is free. So what you do, I want to talk about these recoil springs. Um, and I don't remember which one this one had in it. But uh, there's two different kinds of, uh, here it is, I've got it out. Uh, there's two kinds of, uh, actually two or three different ones. They, they made some changes over the years. Most of these old guns have a uh, one of these collars in it that says up towards muzzle and this and that. And these were kind of a generic um, thing. They had a, uh, oh, a, a cutout inside of it where, you, where they have uh, some uh, felt or something that holds oil. I've made up some new rings and I've kind of got the same thing uh, is a, a cutout in there where we can put some felt we've been putting we've been putting in a, a piece of chamois cloth that tends to hold oil and it stays in place better anyway so there's several different kinds of, sp of, uh, of uh, springs uh, and uh, these collars some of them the early ones uh, had a collar that was actually kind of threaded inside and your spring went in kind of wound into those threads well, we don't have that, and we don't do that anymore. This is actually a 12-gauge spring here. So what you're going to do in most cases, and then here's another style they, they went to, and this, this really works well, too. It's a lot simpler. This one had everything depends on this bevel that's cut in here as to how it slows down the travel of that barrel when it's cycling. Depends on the angle of this bevel. Well, this is one angle, and it just kind of made to shoot everything. They went to a little different system that's a lot simpler and I like it, and I'm going to make these uh, rings up. Um, <clears throat> here's the way they work. There's more of a taper on this one side. And I flip it over, and there's uh, uh, less of a taper. Angle, I should say. And this side, if this is up, this has less of an angle. And here's something else I can show you. There's a, a piece in your barrel. It sticks in your barrel. And I haven't made these up yet, but we're in a process. Uh, and these pieces, they can get lost, but they're not likely to because they stick in the barrel ring. This is called a friction piece. And I thought they were solid copper or bronze or something. 
But on a closer examination, we found out they're actually, we ground on this a little bit, they're actually steel, and they have kind of like a heavy copper plating on them. And so that copper slides in on your magazine tube instead of the bare steel. And uh, we're in the process of making those up. It's a little tricky to make those up because we can make a spring easy enough, but we got to find somebody that can put a heavy copper coating in there and plating. But anyway, in the meantime, these don't go bad very often. But anyway, that should stick in your barrel like so and not come out anyway. So we've got the, our friction ring in place. And here's a new system that I really like a lot. It has a, a little collar that sits on top of your spring. What that does, it kind of gets rid of all the jagged edges on the spring. And so there's a cutout in here. Stick that on the spring like so. And now this bevel, this ring, is set for heavy loads and light loads. And you just do that by turning it upside down. It says so on the ring itself. It says right there. Up for light loads, up, up. And you turn it over, up for heavy loads. I'm going to set it for light loads. I usually test fire with light loads because they don't like getting kicked around. So, put your recoil spring on, and your little collar goes on top of it. Let's set this for uh, light loads with, a, with the uh, shallow bevel up, like so. And these guns, too, and while you've got your gun down, I recommend... This is a long recoil system, and all this slides on this magazine tube. You might want to polish that too, uh, with some fine emery cloth of some sort, and uh, that'll help the gun cycle. And then, as always, like on a browning, just a couple drops of this oil, which we enclose in our kit, and uh, that gun should be ready to go. Now you put your barrel back on. This is a 20 gauge gun. I guess I mentioned that. I don't remember. But this is a 20. And we have kits right now for 20s and 12s. And the 16s will be available very shortly. And the main part of the uh, business end of this kit is this the, the recoil spring. That's what really tames them down. So, okay, we put that gun together. We put all the springs in it. If we were doing things the right way, we would have cleaned it and all that. But we're not going to do that right now. But... We're gonna go back and test fire and see how it works. Uh, these guns really stomp you when that, they've got those old collapsed springs in them. And these new springs really tame them down. It saves you and saves the gun and makes makes life better for everybody. We'll, we'll go shoot it and see what it does. Here, we're shooting two. This doesn't go out into no man's land. This actually goes into a large bullet trap that's back in the back that uh, captures our lead and all. Uh, so, we will uh, make sure the safety's on, and let's find some light, low 20s. Here's some Federals, and uh, put them in, close the bolt, stuff in a couple of inches. All right, fire in the hole. We're going to see if it works. Oh, yeah. Really puts them out. And very, very mild on recoil because of all the new springs in it. That's, uh, that's the important thing on Model 11 48s and Model 48s is replacing those springs. And uh, once you do that, it'll tame it way down, make, make it a whole lot more pleasant shooting it, make it easier on the gun, easier on you.